In NASCAR's 75-year history, there's been many numbers come and go. On any given weekend, you're going to see 36 to 40 unique numbers on the track, and each one of those numbers has a story to tell. Hi, I'm your host, Matt, and this series is called NASCAR Number History, presented by Dogleg Media. And in this series, we're going to take a look at each one of those unique numbers, and we're going to dive into their stories. We're going to talk about the origins of the number, who won the most in the number, some other drivers who have done great things, as well as the current driver. We're going to go chronological order. We did numbers one through five last week. If you haven't seen that video, check it out below. It'll be linked in the description. Today, we tackle number six through ten in NASCAR number history. Let's get started. The number six car has 83 total wins with 12 different drivers. The first to win was back in 1951 with Marshall Teague at Daytona Beach. Another driver who drove the number six is NASCAR legend David Pearson. Pearson would win 27 of his 105 Cup Series wins in the number six. David Pearson is second all time in NASCAR Cup Series history in number of wins, only second to Richard Petty's 200. But you can't talk about the number six car without talking about the driver who made it his home and is the most successful driver to ever pilot the number six, Mark Martin. Martin would win 35 times in the number six, getting his start in 1983 for Ulrich Racing. He would later join Roush in 1988, and he would stay with Roush until the mid-2000s. Martin would get his first win after 113 cup starts. He drove many different paint schemes through the years, many different sponsors, but his most popular and the most notable was his Valvoline number no. 6 car. Martin would gather many different wins, winning the Southern 500, the Coca-Cola 600, and in the mid-2000s, Martin would go with a new sponsor, Viagra. Martin would have a career resurgence at Hendrick Motorsports after leaving Roush and having a couple of years at DEI, finishing second in the points in 2009. But Mark Martin made the number six his home. He's the winningest driver in the number six with 35 wins. The last driver to win in the number six was David Reagan back in 2011 at the Coke 0400. Reagan is an extremely underrated driver in NASCAR history. A two-time cup winner, he got one win in the number six car driving for Roush Racing. Reagan wouldn't find victory lane again in the number six, and it would be a few years later that he would find victory lane in another number that we'll discuss later in the series. But David Reagan, it's been 12 years since the six cars been to victory lane. He was sporting the UPS colors. One of the last few drivers to sport UPS in the sport. David Reagan is your last winner in the number six car. Other drivers to drive the number six are Trevor Bain. Bain won the Daytona 500 with Wood Brothers Racing and would get an opportunity at Roush, driving from 2014 to 2018. After Bain left, Matt Kenseth would make a return to Roush Racing, where he won a championship in 2003, driving the number 17 car. Kenseth never found victory lane, and his reunion at Roush wasn't that great. Ryan Newman drove the number 6 from 2020 to 2021, and in his first race with Roush in the 6, he almost won the Great American Race in 2020. Anybody that watched this race remembers how scary it was to see the accident that Ryan Newman had. He was in the hospital, and for four races, Ross Chastain would fill in for him until Newman could make his return. And now the current driver of the number 6. A 2012 Cup Series champion, Brad Keselowski would leave his long career at Penske to become a new owner-driver at the newly named Roush Fenway Keselowski Racing. Keselowski had a rough first year in the Cup Series, but this year he's already looking strong, almost grabbing a win at Atlanta. Can Keselowski break the 12-year drought that the six cars had and bring it back to victory lane? And now, let's move on to number seven. The number seven has an interesting history with Bob Flock being the first driver to win in 1949 at Hillsboro. Jim Reed would have the most wins in the number, with seven wins in the number seven. And also, seven different drivers have won in the number seven as well. The last driver to win was Jeff Bodine in 1996 at Watkins Glen. The number seven has 23 total wins, and I think it's funny that the most wins is seven, and there's seven different drivers to win in the number seven. This is one of the longer droughts in NASCAR history in terms of without a win since 1996. But you can't talk about the number seven without thinking of Alan Colwicky. 
Alan Colwicky got five wins in the number seven and the 1992 championship as an owner driver. Colwicky would sport Z-Rex and Hooters and his Hooters scheme is still remembered today. Many drivers now will do throwbacks to that scheme and we'll never know what could have been with Alan Colwicky. Unfortunately, on the evening of April 1st, 1993, he was killed in an aviation accident. Colwicky, in my opinion, is the greatest driver to ever drive the number seven. Other drivers to drive were Alex Bowman in 2015 for Tommy Baldwin Racing. He didn't make too many starts and he never really made an impression in the number. Alex Bowman now is of course known for driving the number 48 Hendrick Ally Chevrolet. Danica Patrick's very final cup race would come in the number seven in the Daytona 500. Danica Patrick will be mentioned later in this video for another number that she made home. The Danica Patrick's final cup race unfortunately did not go well, ending in a wreck, the great American race. And of course the current driver, Corey LaJoy. He's a fan favorite and a driver who always gets more out of his equipment than what's there. LaJoy came really close to breaking that long drought last year at Atlanta making a move on Chase Elliott on the final lap and Elliott kind of squeezing him into the wall, causing a wreck. LaJoy is a fan favorite. He has his podcast stacking pennies. If you haven't checked that out, go look at it. But can Corey LaJoy break the long drought, almost 30 years of the seven car not being in victory lane. And now let's take a look at a fan favorite number. Let's take a look at number eight. The number eight first won in 1961 by Joe Weatherly at Daytona. Weatherly would collect 20 wins and two championships in the number. Weatherly had a tragic death in 1964 at Riverside in a crash during a race. But Joe Weatherly is a Hall of Famer and a two-time champion of the number. And of course, you know we had to mention him, Dale Earnhardt Jr. 17 wins, the 2004 Daytona 500 champion. He got his Cup Series start in the number, all the way back in the year 2000 for Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. Many fans speculate, what would have happened with DEI if Dell Jr. had stayed and Dell Sr. hadn't died that tragic day in 2001? Jr. three wins off from the number one spot of Joe Weatherly in the number eight. He would eventually leave to go to Hendrick Motorsports, add another eight to the number, and we'll have to talk about him in a later installment. But Dell Jr., many classify him as the greatest ever drive the number. He sure was a fan favorite driving that iconic. DEI number eight. One of the most emotional moments in NASCAR history was Junior winning the 2001 Pepsi 400, the first time back at the track since his father's passing in the Daytona 500 that year. With teammate Michael Waltrip right behind him, we saw one of the greatest celebrations in all of sports. Other drivers to pilot the number eight. After Dale Earnhardt Jr. left in 2007, Mark Martin and Eric Almarola would split time in the number eight. The number would then go away until Daniel Hemrick would pick the number back up in 2018 driving for Richard Childress Racing. Hemrick never really found success in the number eight and was eventually passed on to Tyler Reddick. Reddick was able to get three wins in the number, all three coming in 2022. Reddick would announce plans to leave Richard Childress to join 2311 and drive the 45 car vacated by Kurt Busch after his incident at Pocono, leaving a massive void for one driver to join Richard Childress Racing. That's right, Rowdy Bush, Kyle Bush, a two-time Cup Series champion, would join Richard Childress after leaving a 15-year stint with Joe Gibbs. He would take over the number eight in a newly rebranded eight car, and it wouldn't take him long to find success. He was able to win the final race at Auto Club's two-mile configuration. His first win with RCR and his first win in the number eight, it's the most recent win and how many more wins will Kyle Busch add in that number eight Chevrolet? And now let's take a look at another fan favorite. It is the number nine car's history. The first win for the number would come back in 1951 at North Wilkesboro by Herb Thomas. Thomas would more famously drive the number 92 car. I was not able to find a photo of his number nine car as he only won one race in the number. The winningest driver in the nine car's history so far is awesome Bill from Dawsonville, million dollar Bill Elliott. Elliott would grab 38 wins in the number nine car. He is a 1988 Cup Series champion, a two-time Daytona 500 champion. He won the All-Star Race. He won the Southern 500. 
If there was a race to win, Austin Bill from Dawsonville was able to get it done. Elliott was also NASCAR's most popular driver for 16 seasons. Elliott would finish out his career at Everham Motorsports driving the number 9 car, where he was able to win the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We're going to talk about his son, Chase Elliott, who took the number from his father a little bit later on, but Austin Bill from Dawsonville, the winningest driver so far with 38 wins in the number 9 car. Other drivers to pilot the number 9. Casey Kane would take over the number after Bill Elliott left Everham, and Kane would find immediate success, winning 11 times in the number 9 car, including an all-star win as a fan vote. Casey Kane had one of the best rookie seasons in NASCAR history of recent, and while Kane left Everham to join Red Bull Racing and then Hendrick Motorsports, Kane would make a home out of the number 9 car. His third all-time in wins for the number, Casey Kane, one heck of a wheelman, and he was just announced to be one of NASCAR's 75 greatest drivers. Another driver, Marcus Ambrose. The Aussie open-wheel driver came to NASCAR for Richard Petty Motorsports, and he was a bona fide road course ringer, grabbing two wins at Watkins Glen, including one heck of a battle between him and cup champion Brad Keselowski, Marcus Ambrose cemented his name as a driver of the number nine car, grabbing two wins in his time at Richard Petty Motorsports. And then of course, the current driver. NASCAR's most popular driver since 2018, son of Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, Chase Elliott. The folks in Dawsonville, Georgia sounded the siren in 2020 as Chase Elliott won his first Cup Series championship. Elliott is an 18 time winner, 20 wins behind his father and Chase Elliott get to that win total. Will he pass his father? He took after his father in most popular and in driving ability, and Elliott is the most recent driver to win in 2022. Elliott was sidelined for six weeks in 2023 with a leg injury. He is back now. How many more wins can Chase Elliott add to the number nine car? And now let's take a look at the history of the number 10 car. The number 10 car has 12 total wins with five different drivers, the first of those being Greg Sachs. In 1985, Sachs would win the summer Daytona race that year. The driver with the most wins is Ricky Rudd with six wins in the number 10. Rudd would drive the iconic Tide colors on the number 10 car. Other drivers to drive the number, of course, Derek Cope. Cope would win the 1990 Daytona 500 in the number 10 car, one of the bigger upsets in the sports history. Cope would have two wins in the number, winning at Dover in that same year, 1990. Johnny Benson would also win in the number 10 car. He would take home the victory in the 2002 Rockingham race in the fall. Johnny Benson is one of a few drivers to win races in all three of NASCAR's top three divisions. Benson is a truck series champion, and he got one win in the number 10 car at Rockingham. Scott Riggs would take over the number 10 car for Benson after he left. Riggs would not find any success in the number, piloting it from 2004 to 2007. Then, of course, Danica Patrick, one of the most iconic names to drive the number 10. She piloted it from 2012 to 2017. Patrick is the only woman in NASCAR history to lead a lap in the Daytona 500, as well as be a pole sitter for the Daytona 500. While Patrick never won a race in NASCAR's top division, she was a pioneer for women in the sport being the only woman, again, to lead a lap at the Great American Race. Patrick would end her career in the number 10 car in 2017 before racing one final race in the number 7 car at the Daytona 500 in 2018. And of course the current driver and the most recent win in the number is Eric Almarola. Almarola has spent time at a few other numbers. He found his home at Stuart Haas Racing in the number 10 car. He would win two races so far at Talladega and New Hampshire. Can Eric Almarola add to the win total for the number 10 car? And that'll do it for number 6 through 10 in NASCAR number history. Let me know down below which number surprised you the most. Next week, we tackle numbers 11 through 15. Did you know that the number 11 is going to be a long one for us to dive into? It's the winningest number in NASCAR history. Drivers like Kelly Yarbrough, Daryl Waltrip, Junior Johnson, and of course now Denny Hamlin have all piloted the number 11 car. We'll jump in to numbers 11 through 15 next week. But in the meantime, guys, if you haven't checked out number history 1 through 5, go give that video a watch. Let me know what you think. 
Be sure to follow us on Twitter and go to the Daily Downforce to check up on all your NASCAR news. Until next time, guys, I'm Matt, your host, and you've been watching NASCAR Number History.